Good evening, everybody, and a warm welcome to you all here there, in Amsterdam Live, but also to you online from everywhere, from all over the globe. The coming hours, we will be taking, talking, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, talking about the development of the transitions towards a donut economy. And the first half hour uh, will will be very special as we will be joined by hundreds of people from all over the globe to hear more about the first Global Donut Day. Fantastic that you're all here and please welcome your international brothers and sisters uh, with a big applause. Can we online see? Ja, en nu wil ik mezelf dus niet groot zien, maar de andere. I want to see all the, the people who are joining. Um, fantastic that you're here. So first a half hour, we'll do this with a global conversation, um, which will be hosted by my co-host for that part of the Global Donut Day. Give him a warm welcome to the stage, Rob Shorter. So Rob, uh, now there are all these people online, right? Uh, I don't know whether we can see them. They see us now. Uh, but let me ask before I'm going to hand you, give you the floor for the first half hour, and you're going to cr go across the entire globe, right, to some of the donut activities from all over the world. Um, let's see who was on the the previous edition of a donut day activity day in 2000 last year. Almost half. Half is new. Um, who uh, who was? Uh, joining today, an activity of the day, who has been donating the entire day. Almost everybody, fantastic. And who is putting the donut economy into practice, big or small? Into practice, ooh, 40%, no, well, 30%, 70% still possibilities. Um, so, uh, fantastic that you're all here, fantastic that everybody from uh, all over the world is joining us for the first half hour. And I'm now giving the floor to Europe. Have fun with Global Conversations. Thank you so much, Natasha. And thank you for making space for this global connection as part of your Donut Day here in Amsterdam. This is a very special room. I remember stepping into here the very first time in 2021 as part of the uh, Amsterdam Donut Days. We thought from Deal, we were coming across from the UK, what's this Amsterdam Deal Days? And we had been working on these ideas in practice through lockdown. And we stepped into this room and hundreds of people were practicing donut economics across Amsterdam. And we thought, oh, wow, this is what donut economics is in practice. Again, last year in 2022, we came together again in this space and we heard from the pioneers in practice and there was a real sense of momentum and members of the local municipality, the Gemente, were responding to that energy and they're showing their commitments for this work. Amsterdam was showing how you can lead the way with creating a network for change across your place. Today, I invite you to sit back and relax. You have been on display for the last few years, showing what is possible. Launching the first ever city portrait back in 2020, all the way through to today. You have been a spotlight for the world to be inspired. And we recognize that donor economics in practice is shared through that peer to peer inspiration. So you get to sit here and watch your peers in a way like a firework display. You've been throwing up these amazing fireworks and this beautiful display for others to watch and think we want to be part of that too. So you can sit in your garden here around the fire, toasting marshmallows and watching the global firework display happen tonight from Melbourne to Mexico City, from Beijing to Birmingham. There are over 30 places part being connected globally on this day as part of Global Donut Day. So we're going to connect with uh, a few of them now. But before we go there, we're going to hear from Rosa, who has been, we've been working together for the last 
I guess, almost a year on how this comes together. But Rose has put together the programme for Amsterdam and I'm going to invite you to share a little bit about what's happened today. Thank you so much. Wow, it's amazing to be here. Like you said, we started this over a year ago and now we're not only here with uh, all of you, but with everyone worldwide and that's amazing. Uh, my name is Rosa Tibels. I am the coordinator of the Amsterdam Donut Coalition and it has been an absolute blessing to work with everyone these past few months, almost a year. Um, I think the amazing thing of the Amsterdam Festival each year is that we don't just have an event over here in the center of the city, but we're really going out there. We're in the southeast with the Green Hub. We're in New West with the Donut Bakery. We are uh, out there with the Amsterdam University of Applied Sciences. The municipality had a session over today. We're everywhere throughout the city now coming together to celebrate another year of putting donut economics into practice, being joined by everyone worldwide. And this year I had the pleasure of not only having this process of getting here, which is half the fun really, <laughs> with uh, all of the pioneers in Amsterdam, but with working with all of the coalitions all over the world. So thank you very much for that. And I'm very excited for tonight because after last year we started building this very strong partnership so that we could work together and really take our work to the next level. And those partners will come on stage with us after this and we'll have breakouts where we'll dive deeper into the strategy that we've developed and i would love to tell a lot about that but it took me five minutes in the session putting ideas into practice that we had earlier today so i encourage you to watch that back if you're curious about the strategy of amsterdam for the people in the room don't worry i'm going to explain it again later today uh, this evening um, and if you want to get a little bit deeper into that there has also been a session as part of the global donor day uh, today on a European research collaboration. So be sure to watch that back as well to get a better idea of that. And I'm very excited to get started. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Rosa. So now we're going to test the technology and we're going to see if we can connect to our friends in other countries around the world. And we're going to start with London. We're going to dial in to the program that's happening in London and invite Chris Paddock. Hello, Chris. We can see you there, but can we hear you? No. We can't hear you. Can anyone lip read in the room? <laughs> right. Okay. We can't hear you. Yes. No, you can't hear me. We can hear you. Take it away. What, what have you been up to today? One second. I'm going to get everyone to say hello. Before you just like to the Okay, we have had, <laughs> we've had uh, about 250 different people in the room today. We had about 100 in for the introductory stuff this morning. Um, we have had eight people putting two different workshops doing what we call grown up and uh, and we've got, we've got two of the people in the room this evening. Um, it's been amazing. We started off in the morning with some discussions which were challenging. We talked a lot about, about some of the issues that face the city. As the day wore on, we heard from different businesses, we heard from uh, different organisations. We mapped about 150 different projects across the city. Lots of people have been coming up to us saying, what can I do? How can I get involved? So there's a huge amount of momentum. And just in the last sort of 10 or 15 minutes of networking, people have kind of been coming together and starting to talk about the lobbying we want to do, the projects we want to form. So there's just an absolute ton of momentum in the room. And the last thing I wanted to say was one of our one of our partners, Toast, who made beer from waste bread, said if you want to change the system host a better party than those people are in power. So that's what we're trying to do tonight. <laughs> Amazing. Thanks so much, Chris. I hope you have a wonderful evening tonight. Thanks so much. And now we're going to pass over to Nairobi. And there's been a parallel session today 
inviting children to give their view on what a donut-shaped future could be. There's been a session here in Amsterdam, and there's been a session hosted by Tinka Duma in Nairobi. So, hopefully, another fingers crossed, can we dial to Tinka? Hi, can you hear me? Hello. Hi, good, Tinka. Can How you are you? What you've been doing today, a few highlights from your, your, your work today. Yes, for sure. Actually, I'm not in Nairobi. I'm in Kilifi. It's a small coastal town just uh, up north from Mombasa. And uh, we've organized a workshop um, with a group of 10-year-old kids in which they were on a mission to build up human life on a new planet. Uh, and with all the lessons they learned from Earth, they were designing uh, this new life from the perspective of three topics, um, which was health, uh, money and possession, and nature. Uh, so these were topics that we explored in relation to their own lives uh, and how they would want this new world to look like. Fantastic. And where um, might this work go? The work that you're doing with young people, have you got a, uh, a next step in mind? Um, yeah, I have a little bit of a better idea now. Um, funny thing is that all the kids were, uh, they found it really important to share. Uh, they see access as, as something that provides happiness and avoids uh, like stress and depression. But the funny thing is only if everyone has access to this. Um, technology also seemed to play a really big part. Uh, they were all talking about an e-world, um, e-books, um, e-money, uh, in order to, you know, not use any paper and not cut any trees, um, which was interesting because in the Dutch workshop, actually, in Amsterdam, um, the nature team actually said that they did not want to use laptops and phones anymore. So... That's quite an interesting difference. Um, there are many more, many more insights that we have from these sessions today, um, which is a bit too much to share just in this few minutes of time. Thank you so much. Yeah, and we were hearing a bit about the, the Dutch donut that the children ima had imagined, and there was even an oxygen-creating machine, which I thought is, was pretty, uh, pretty cool. So, um, yeah, it's a wonderful to have this yeah. exchange between the two places. Um, so thanks so much for joining us, and, uh, yeah, hope you enjoy the rest of the program. Thank you so much. Thank you. And later today, so we're going to have, later this evening, uh, we're going to have an, another few connections. There are nine cities across Brazil that are holding uh, local donut events and festivals. So we're going to be connecting with them as well as North Macedonia and more places beyond. Um, next, what uh, we're going to do is hear from Kate Rayworth and Carlotta Sands, the co-founders of Deal to share a little story about how an idea turned into what we have today. So wondering if we have Kate and Carlotta there. We are very much here. Hi. Hi, Kate, over to you. Fantastic. Hello, everybody in Pack House. Uh, definitely there with you in spirit. The minute I hear Natasha's voice, I know it is a donut day in Amsterdam and my energy goes up. So. I'm definitely there with you in spirit. Hi, Kate. Hi, Natasha. And hello to everybody else who's joining us online from around the world. Having this little moment of being in the pack house together with the crew in Amsterdam. So Carlotta and I are going to tell you a story of Donut Economics Action Lab. And I'm going to share my screen to tell you this story. Uh the story of Deal. The story of Deal starts with the story of the donut. But of course, the story of the donut doesn't start with the donut because everything comes from somewhere. So I want to ask, where does the donut come from? I can tell you where I know it comes from in my own little head. In the 1990s, I was profoundly influenced by two diagrams I saw. One, this image by Herman Daly, one of the founding fathers of ecological economics. And Daly said, it's obvious, isn't it? That the economy is a subset of the living world. Let's just agree that. And what if hundreds of years ago when economic theory began, it was like an empty world. The economy was small relative to the whole of the living world. So we could afford somehow to draw on materials and put out waste without worrying too much where it went, perhaps. But we are not there now. We live in full world and the economy is banging up against the sides of the biosphere. 
this diagram had a huge impact on me, but it's entirely conceptual. So I didn't quite know what to do with it. I know it went into the back of my head and sat there for decades, along with this one from Friends of the Earth. Yes, once again, the Netherlands. You start a lot of things, you folks in the Netherlands. Friends of the Earth Netherlands drew this diagram in the 1990s and called this space the environmental space between staying within planetary boundaries or the limits on the planet, but also ensuring a minimum for all and this lovely space between. And I thought, oh, I like that picture. So these sit in the back of my head for decades until 2009, the world's Earth system scientists published this diagram showing that we are not just touching up against the biosphere, but all that red shows you we are overshooting the life supporting systems of our planetary home. And this hit me with a jolt. This diagram literally changed my life. I could not help but start doodling on it. If there's an outer limit of pressure, surely as friends of the earth told us, there's an inner limit too, isn't there? So I started drawing a circle within a circle. And like many ideas, this began literally on the back of an envelope, then turned into a very clunky PowerPoint presentation. And then thanks to Christian Gutierrez, designer at Oxfam, where I worked, we turned it into the first version of the donut. So we're finding an image that tells us we need to thrive somehow in balance. But of course, this isn't really just where the donut came from, because for millennia, indigenous cultures around the world have represented health, well-being, thriving, just in this kind of way, thriving in dynamic balance. So I think of Daly's diagram and Friends of the Earth and indeed the donut. These are like a Western mindset walking its way back towards a wisdom that's been held by indigenous cultures for millennia. Now, if we want to thrive in that space between the social foundation and the ecological ceiling, we have to recognize we are in massive overshoot. It's even worse than this diagram from 2017 shows. So how do we turn this story around? What kind of thinking would enable us to actually move into the donut instead of continuing out of it? And that is why I wrote Donut Economics, not as a list of things to do and policies to implement, but ways of thinking that would give each one of us even just half the chance of coming back in this direction. So it sets out seven ways to think like a 21st century economist. And when this book came out in 2017, what thrilled me was not just the debates it kicked off at Packhouse and in many other venues, debating ideas with economists. It was what people started doing because people started playing with it in a crazy way. School children and teachers, community in Birmingham, the government of China, the city of Amsterdam, community members in Cornwall, in Berlin, all around the world, youth movements started playing with it. Dutch people there, those are Dutch people, the ones with the crazy glasses, yeah, the Dutch again, huh? Playing in the most inventive way. And it raised in me this question, what would best help these pioneers turn Donut Economics into transformative action? They don't just want to read the book, they want to do it. So when I met Carlotta Sands, we decided to co-found Donut Economics Action Lab in 2019. And I'm gonna hand over to her to tell this story from here on. Thank you, Kate. And hello everyone. It's just so great to join not only people in Amsterdam, but people all over the world. Um, and I'm gonna continue this story. As Kate said, we created Deal precisely to work with this emergent community of practitioners that really wanted to put these ideas into practice. And the name was always very intentional since the beginning. We knew we wanted to focus on turning ideas into action. And it was clear that we would do it in the spirit of experimentation. So really learning what it would take to spread powerful ideas like the donuts, very wide, with integrity, and at the speed and scale that these times demand. And so how we've been doing it since then? Well, we've been focusing on co-creating tools that turn these ideas into practice, and we've been putting them in the commons. So really inviting others to innovate, to adapt them to their own contexts. And we've been working broadly across six themes of practice. 
from cities and regions to communities and arts, research and academia, schools and education, business and enterprise, government and policy. So these have been our sixth main theme of practice at DEAL. And after four years, we're now a, four, uh, a team of 14, and we've been working remotely since then, but in very deep collaboration with a growing diverse community of practice that has emerged all around the world and playing very different roles. So from local community-led um, networks, groups that have emerged around the ideas of Donut economics, many of which actually today are hosting these local festivals, to other organizations maybe working much more in collaboration with city governments, business consultants, educators, speakers, and many, many more. And as I was saying, it's just been great to see the very unique and valuable role that each organization, each individual has been playing in turning these ideas into practice. And just fascinating to see this community pop up and come to life in so many ways, right? So many ways in which change makers have chosen to engage with these ideas all over the world throughout these years. And in designing DEAL, we've been following some principles that have really helped us shape and inspire our own evolution, right? And we wanted to take this time to celebrate what these principles have meant in practice um, to us, to the community, and also even to this event today, right? So we've gone where the energy is. We've been a small team focusing on working with those that already find these ideas useful. So we haven't really focused on persuading or lobbying or convincing others, but rather work where the energy was. And we've been recognizing that every change maker, every local counselor, every activist, every teacher in their place, in their locality, are in the best position to really judge whether these ideas are useful. And we've just followed that energy. And this event, I think, is a beautiful example of that because it was really driven and started by the energy of local organizers saying, we want to make this happen. And Rob beautifully said it at the beginning, we've always believed in the power to peer, of peer-to-peer -peer inspiration in bringing these ideas into practice because most people, right, get inspired by actually seeing someone like themselves doing something that they were not thinking it was possible or hadn't yet imagined. And that's exactly what we've been seeing since the very beginning at DEAL. Teachers inspiring teachers, mayors inspiring mayors, activists, other activists. And again, today I think is a beautiful example of peer-to-peer -peer inspiration. It started in Amsterdam and look what we've all created together, right? And again, the whole day, I think it's been about learning and getting inspired about what other peers are doing um, across the world in putting these ideas into practice. And finally, economic transformation is big teamwork. So we've always said, we know it takes a wide ecosystem of actors, of interconnected worldviews, different cultures, different traditions, to get to the traction and the scale that we need to bring about the transformation needed. So no single idea can do it all together. And a lot of the work that we've done from DEAL is really try to make tools that are as accessible and that they can be really integrated in other movements, in other organizations so that they can work together. And again, today, a massive example of big teamwork is a, the first ever Global Donut Day, really bringing together so many people from so many places. And so we want to just thank everyone and acknowledge the amazing, incredible work that has gone through so many months already. So thank you all. And we look forward to the rest of the program. And we look forward to see the many ripples we're sure it's going to bring for the future. Thank you, everyone. And I'll hand it over back to Rob. It's slightly surreal to see Kane Carlotta up there on the screen, um, and it's, it's also slightly surreal to be here in, in person with you. I'm going to step away uh, from your uh, session in the room here, and uh, we're going to continue with the online program for those of you joining us um, from around the world. We're going to start, Kate is going to share the ideas with props. She's not using any, um, any presentation slides, so it's, I saw it this morning as well. There's a, there's a, um, a closed loop uh, pipe, uh, pl pl uh, some plumbing equipment that she's got from a local hardware store, so it's quite entertaining as well as informative. 
we've got a, a session on education and the new tools that we're developing for um, to bring into schools. And we have a session on meeting the needs of all, tuning in to our needs, yours and mine, working with the universal recognition movement of uh, a, an amazing community of disability and deaf um, consultants who we've been working with to make donut Global Donut Day as accessible as possible. So some incredible insights. There'll be a panel of people sharing those. And the last session, so many sessions to remember. Um, we're going to hear from Andrew Fanning and Timothy uh, Timothy Parikh talking about the goal of an economy moving from GDP to thriving in the donut. So that would round up the the full program of events online today. But now I get to lead you, I leave you and hand you back into the hands of Natasha, who will take you back into the world of Dutch and, um, and to, to what your next steps are here in um, Amsterdam. So thank you very much for joining, well, for being part of this here in person, for joining us online for this connection. Um, and I invite you to, yeah, enjoy the rest of the evening. Dames and heren, Rob, shorter.